Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Is Trish is dying to know? I am. I am dying to know. You think Carl is? Yeah, I think Carl's. Well, Carl's just... Mm. I think he's asleep. Dead. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Carl's just dead. Um, no, Cal is dying to know. Yes. Cal, I think Cal needs to be a more active member of our team. I think we carry Cal a lot. We do. He's not doing a lot, is he? Up your game, mate. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're very abusive to Cal. I hope you don't treat staff that you work with like <gasps> Never. <laughs> no wonder Cal sits there quietly in the corner. He's too scared to do anything else. But ask the staff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. How is everybody yeah. out there? Hope you are well. We've just done something exciting. We have we? we? Yes, it was We're always doing things exciting. We but today was particularly cool. Tell yeah. the good people what we did. Um, we did a podcast today. We did. We were asked to be part of a podcast, which is yeah. such an honour. Oh, I just bashed them. Just did what I tell you not to do. <gasps> such an honour. It, it was. was. So lovely. Yes. So it's Exciting for that it to come is. out. We'll yes. let you know when we find out a date yes. that's going to be released. Thanks, Alana, for inviting us yes. and doing the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. That was a lot of fun, actually. It was good. Yeah, it mm. was good. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we didn't talk over each other like we normally do. Mm, don't know. Today, we're answering a question from Isabel. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Isabel. How are you doing? Isabel is currently in mortuary school. Um, and recently heard that many people working with formaldehyde end up with health issues and that the risk of getting cancer is quite high. Uh, Isabel's very passionate about the funeral industry, but hearing this has made Isabel slightly hesitant. Um, and she goes on to say she's curious to know if this is something Tracy thinks about in her career and if there are ways to safely navigate formaldehyde or if it'll always be a health risk. Mm. Yeah, that's a good question because uh, you're working with chemicals and working with chemicals is always a risk. You know, there's always a risk uh, with any, any kind of chemical. <clears throat> uh, but you've got to remember formaldehyde. Well done. Is in everything. Mm. You know, absolutely everything. Right. It's in the furniture. Right. It's in the flooring. Right. It's everywhere. Is it? It is. I did not know that. I didn't know that till I started doing that. Uh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere, formaldehyde is in everything. Wow, okay. And, yeah, so people are exposed to it daily. All the time? Yeah. Okay. Daily, but we're exposed to it in a slightly higher concentration because you're dealing with the chemicals. Now, yeah, I don't think about it, and I've been hairdresser for 20 years, and again, chemicals. Uh, in hairdressing years, years ago, we didn't use anything really to protect ourselves from the chemicals. I was thinking that when we were sitting there doing that podcast, mm. actually, and thinking about what if hairdressers had to be PPE'd up, like yeah. uh, you are at work now, as morticians and embalmers yeah. are, that would be a different scene, wouldn't it? It would be a different scene. <laughs> they'd, yeah. have, they'd have to have, like you do, the, the, um, the ventilator mask, yeah. which is the big Darth Vader mask that we've yeah. shown you before, the face shield, they'd yeah. have to have the blue gown, they'd yeah. have to have the gloves, they'd have yeah. to have... The face mask, the whole kit and caboodle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was funny when I was uh, diagnosed with uh, severe dermatitis. That's the reason I had to leave the industry. Um, hairdressing industry. Hairdressing industry, yes, sorry. Um, I tried my best to stay and I wore gloves. Uh, for, I mean, you always wear gloves to apply chemicals, the perm solution and the colours, but you have to take them off to then do the hair. And that's when you're exposed to the chemical because it's on the hair and it's still there. Uh, and obviously it's in the air as well, so you're not wearing a mask. You know, and I, I got severe dermatitis, face and hands, um, and it looked like I had third degree burns. Mm. So I tried, because I didn't want to leave the industry, and I tried to work with gloves all of the time. But trying to cut hair with gloves on doesn't work, because you're just cutting the gloves constantly, because you, like, you've got these really tight gloves on, and you, you've seen hairdressers, how they glide across the fingers, and this is why I've got a lot of scars on my fingers, because the end, because you couldn't write against your fingers, so all you're doing is cutting the gloves and it's like, it's a losing battle. But I never thought about putting anything on my face, masks or anything, so I was still exposed, so I had to go. So, yes, the best way to uh, protect yourself is the full PPE, which is your, especially when you're embalming, is your ventilation mask, this special mask that you wear, that you will uh, be taught this in your mortuary school also. Uh, your face shields, your safety glasses, 
your mask, your gloves. Um, usually when you embalm, I, I often double glove, you know, so chemicals can't get, even though chemicals shouldn't get through your nitrile gloves, which is the best nitrile or, or the ones that do protect you more than the latex. And a lot of people are allergic to latex and I am, so nitrile gloves are really the best. And I, I usually double glove when I'm uh, working with the chemicals. Um, and of course your ventilation system in the embalming room has to be top notch. The air circulation has to be going through every, I think it's every 12 seconds or something, it's changed. There's a, a, you should have ventilation from the ceiling, uh, the uh, middle of the room and the bottom because formaldehyde is heavy and it will drop to the ground and so you need the ventilation system. It's like in a roll in ventilation because you've got different chemicals that float in different areas, you know, so you've got the heavier chemicals, the lighter, so the ventilation has to, in your air condition and has to have a clean floor and it has to be filtered out away, you know, not just into under the room next door. It's got to be, you know, all filtered. And if you do all that precaution, we are a higher risk in the industry, but it's still very minimal if you use all them precautions. If you're um, smart and do it all the time, because a lot of times we'll pop in the mortuary and say, oh, I just really need to, I'll do just quickly do that. Yeah. And you don't put your boots on because you think, I'm only going to be five minutes. Then you'll get a spillage and you've got it all over your shoes and your, your legs. Oh, it's getting complacent, that's yeah, the problem. That's the when you do something and day we've in, all day out. We've yeah. all done it, you know. I was just at an embalming conference a few weeks ago and we were talking about this exact thing and how like all of us have to, I'll, I'll just not put the gown on here, just quickly do this, or I'll not put my eye shield on, or I'll not put my mask, because do this, then you'll get a splash and you get this. You know, so you really can't be complacent at any time. If you pop popping in for a second, PPE, PPE, all the time, if it's for a second. And I know it's a lot of time you're going, oh, I need a wee, I need to go to the loo, or can't be bothered, I've got to like, get everything off, wash, go to the bathroom, wash, come back, everything back on. But, you know, you learn to, I can get my PPE on and off pretty fast now, you know, but you've got to be careful as well, removing your PPE, don't just start pulling everything over your face and pulling your gloves down with your, you know, your, your gloved hands as a way to peel your PPE off so you're not exposing your skin to the glove that you're peeling off. Don't peel one off and then get your bare hand and peel the other one off because then you've exposed yourself to the... And you'll get taught all of that in your uh, mortuary school, how to take PP off correctly as well as fitting it correctly. Um, and because we're not in a hospital, hospitals, uh, they have their masks fitted properly, you know, really fitted. So they, they are more protected than we are in a mortuary. But if you wear the ventilation masks and you make sure you get one that's, because you can get different sizes, that is a tight seal around your nose and mouth, you know, you're, you're reducing your risk really 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 low and these days chemicals um the amount of formaldehyde that's in chemicals now is getting less and less and i know um i was talking to somebody that works in the um the body donor um place in uh, one of the universities not far from here and i know they're working on uh, chemicals that don't have any of that in whatsoever so that's you know watch this space could be happening in years to come uh, in the very near future within a few years so uh yeah you will be more exposed than others but it's it's if you do the correct things and be careful when you're going into a mortuary in an embalming room you, your risk's very 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 low very low so, so there's no need to worry yeah there's a risk with worry. everything yeah and um and you know these days too with litigation it's very important that employers meet the standards that's right uh, yeah. and people are more aware of that than they that's used to right. be in years ago so um i'm yeah. sure the risk is coming down even as we speak it is yes and yes you're right we all um duty of care in mm. the mortuary schools have duty of care to you uh, our employers have duty of care to us all and yeah so yeah don't we have afraid. duty of care to cal we do yeah, Carl's probably full of formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah, I think he may be. 
Um, I was just thinking of something. I have a favourite song by a comedian slash musician slash amazing person, cool. Tim Minchin, yeah. Aussie, yay. Um, hi, Tim, if you're watching. Yeah, Tim um, <laughs> And Tim uh, has a song from years back called, uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's about chemicals are in everything. Yeah. And everything is chemical. And people say, oh, I don't want to touch this because it's full of chemicals, or, oh, I don't eat chemicals, I like to eat organic food, or whatever they say, and that's all well and good, but everything is chemical. Everything's made up of compounds. It is. Of um, elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everything is chemical. Everything is, and I was fascinated that everything's made of formaldehyde too. <laughs> and I'm fascinated that Tracy can say it now. <laughs> Oh, no, well, sticking that extra L in there, <laughs> flummaldehyde. It's like it always reminds me of flummery. When I was a kid, my mum used to make flummery. Didn't you have junket and flummery? No. Oh, didn't you? So in Australia, we had these tablets. It was a dessert, and it was a tablet, and I think it was gelatin. I don't know what it was, but they're all different flavors. The tablets, and they'd come in like a paper thing of tablets. And they'd be like in the jelly aisle, where the jelly is at the supermarket. And you'd have lemon ones and raspberry ones and whatever, chocolate ones. And you'd mix it with, I think, boiled milk. And it would set like, like a, a jelly like but a made jelly. with milk. Okay. And it's called flummery because it was like, <laughs> I think you'd beat it. And it was like full of air, so it was light, okay. like moussey. Oh, so it will be like uh, Angel Delight that we get in the UK. Okay. Yeah, something uh, like that. Uh, yeah, Delight. flummery and junket. Yeah. And that's what I think of when Tracy says flummaldehyde. I think of flummery. So now I'm going to think of Angel Delight. Oh, that that's just so wrong. <laughs> Angel Delight. It's like Afternoon Delight. Oh, we digress. Uh, Anywho, yeah. nice to see you people. Thank yes. you. Take care, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.